Kira Riley. I'm the director of the Penn Alumni Travel Program, and I'm sitting here with Marjorie Margolis, who is a Penn alumna and also a professor at the Fells Institute of Government at the University of Pennsylvania. And she is leading our trip to Tanzania this January, Traditional and Modern Women in Tanzania. So I thought we'd take this opportunity to have her tell us a little bit about what we will learn on the trip and what she's going to share with our travel participants. So Marjorie, tell us about Women's Campaign International and your work with them. I was the head of our delegation for the Beijing Conference in 1995 in China. And it was the first United Nations conference where they actually committed to doing something with this document that, that they create with all these conferences. And our commitment through the White House was to get more women to the table. And that's how Women's Campaign International was born. And it was in 1998. We had absolutely no idea if it work, would work or if people really cared. And they do, but it's very challenging. The first programs that are always cut are gender programs. It's very hard in many cultures to make women count. Um, they're so marginalized often. But we've been in about 20 different countries, and we train women to get to get to the table. We train women to create messages. We train. We do uh, media message, grassroots organizing, polling, fundraising, those kinds of things. And we've been very successful. And the women are fantastic. Uh, and one of the countries that we've worked in is Tanzania. As a matter of fact, years ago, we did a program there for widows. And what we do, um, kind of in a linear fashion, is to get these women together and make sure that they know, even if we're talking to farmers, if we're talking to women who are involved in agriculture, or we're talking to entrepreneurs, or we're talking to people who want to be in politics, or we're talking to healthcare workers, whatever it is, they all have a message that they've got to share. Sometimes it's with the public, sometimes it's just with people who are going to be funding, Some, sometimes it's with bankers, and that's what we do. What do you hope to share with the alumni that travel with you to Tanzania this January? Well, I think what I hope those on the trip want to get out of the trip is what's on the ground. I mean, what we do a lot of bottom-up, top-down, so that we work with the women on the top who are trying to empower these women, but we're also working with rural women to figure out, look, I'll give you an example, in Liberia, the only president, female president of an African country is Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. She got there because rural women, they're called market women, market women voted for her. Her grandmother used to be a market woman. They're not measured. They're not measured in many countries. So when you go into a country like Tanzania, They'll say there's a 64% um, unemployment rate. Well, they're not really measuring the people on the ground. They're not measuring these extraordinary women. Uh, so they don't, they don't count. If you, if you go into the fields, you'll notice that most of the people who are out there are women. Uh, but, but they don't keep any of the money. They only own 1% of the land worldwide. They get 10% of the, of the money that's coming in. And they deal with something that we deal with in terms of just writ large around the world, they deal with something called time poverty. That is, if it takes you five hours a day to get clean water, think of how inhibiting that is with regard to your everyday, you know, just trying to bring clean water home to your family, huge. If, uh, if you could uh, drill a well, what, what, difference is, what difference will that make? It's enormous. And that's what I want to look at. I want to look at how women survive, what's important to them, how they hold their families together. They're the ones who are holding their families together. I, I'm fascinated by the culture that says that you have to listen to what your husband says no matter what, so that the men who feel that they are absolutely, um, that they have the right to run around, the spread of AIDS in a country like Tanzania is un. Unbelievable. How does how do you stop that? Um, I, I'd love to see if we can visit a fistula hospital. Um, one of the biggest problems in Africa with regard to women is that they have babies when they're very young, often they're very small, and they uh, and they blow their bottoms out. I mean, they have uh, they have leakage problems. Sometimes just urine, but often but, but bowel and urine, and they're just cast aside. 
So in many of the countries that, that we've been working in, especially in Ethiopia, they have fistula hospitals that deal only with this problem. And there's a, there, are huge, there are a lot of fistula problems in Tanzania. So I, I, I really want the women and the men who would, will be on this um, to, to look at the incredible riches of the country, but also understand fundamentally what's happening on the ground. And I would assume also that it's, there's a lot of problems that you're working to solve, but there's also a lot of hope and strong and powerful women that, you, that we might encounter there. There are. And we will get in touch with them and see if they can meet with us, especially a lot of leaders who love to meet with groups from the United States. Um, and I think you're right, there is hope. It's, it's hard because sometimes a country as poor as most of these African countries are will go really far and then they, then they hit a drought or they hit some kind of... Um, uh, any kind of natural disaster that they can't deal with. And it just sets them back. They're, they're not on firm enough ground. The other thing that, that, they, that they have to deal with is, is in incredible corruption. And we're, we're not sure, as a country that has a good heart, how to deal with that. So I would love to talk to some of their leaders. One of the things that we are doing in this campaign international is we're trying to set up an organization of first ladies in Africa. One of the women we got elected in Malawi is now, has just married the new head of the African Union, he's president of Malawi. And we were trying to set up a first ladies organization that has teeth, but we're gonna try and do it with Bingu. Bingu Wa is the is the president and also the head of the African Union. And we want him to put this on our list, and one of the countries that we are really interested in working with and in is Tanzania. And can you also speak a little bit about what you teach here at the Fell School? I teach, I teach two courses and then every four years I teach another one. Uh, I teach empowering women in emerging democracies and then we, we actually weave in what we're doing with, through WCI. In one instance, and sometimes we'll raise students with us, in one instance we, we did a special project with the um, Minister of Health from Malawi, a woman we had gotten elected, and we brought her here to deal with one issue, malaria. It's a huge issue in, in all of Africa. Um, and then we took students over there to show her what we had learned. And I teach a course in media and politics, because I had had a little bit to do with each. And then every four years I teach a class with David Eisenhower on, um, on campaigns and conventions, and we take the whole class to both isn't that cool? It is cool. <laughs> it's fantastic. So those are the So in two years the students I exactly. guess will get to experience exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. Well thank you. We're we're excited and uh, we hope that a lot of people well, will so join fun. you. Me too. It's gonna be so much fun. I agree. Thank you. They know what they want to say.